I get the phone call from the designer saying they're interested in the rave stuff, which to me is just fantastic. It's because it's always the old 80s skinhead work that mainly goes on, on clothing. And so I didn't know what photographs they were going to choose. I just, you know, I just said, right, here's the rave collection. And I loved that. The first ones to have done that, to use my rave work. The, the privilege of it, to know that my work is used on, and, you know, is used on this stuff, it blows my mind, really, because I've done fuck all when it comes down to pushing myself as a photographer. Not, pff, nothing. Absolutely nothing. And the, but I still get these opportunities, which is in a way is a bit crazy to me. So hopefully I'll be able to find the two they used. That's why I, that's why I love giving a collection of my work when I get contacted about um, them being used for whatever. Because that became a total surprise to me. You know, so what will they use? Will it be good? And this is a combination of two pictures. One was at the end of the night in Slough Centre. My friends are in there, my friends Cyborg, Stuart, and there's my brother Neville, and my friend Nipper. Uh, there, yeah, there's my brother Neville there. So that makes it even more personal. And it was a combination of that and this, which is I was off my tits when I took the. I'm literally just wandering around going, and, uh, and for them to end up on a piece of clothing, which I think will actually end up being some, some people's favorite piece of clothing. I think people, I would anyway. And um, it makes it even more important to me, really. Yeah, it was very important to me. I came to a, I came to a, a place where it's like, right, okay, I can live off this for the rest of my life and get adulation off this for the rest of my life and sit on my ass for the rest of my life and get stroked for being photographs I took when I was 15 to 18. Great, I could do that. But something inside my being was like, this is, I've got to get this raid book out there. I needed it politically to sort of put a wedge between, I was a skinhead, took photographs of skinheads and then became a dustman and that was that. I was, a, I was always a photographer first and foremost. And for the raving book to culture to be out there, it's changed a lot for me as a photographer. I'm no longer Mr. Skinhead, you know, because there's a whole lot of people. The greatest thing that I was waiting for for that was somebody to come up to me and go, I love your raving book. Oh, you've seen a Skinhead one. Oh, you've got a Skinhead one. I was like, yes, fucking yes. They didn't know that I had had a Skinhead book out there. I thought, yeah, if one person knows that, that's good for me. Not that I'm slagging off, but it wasn't, that, that was a, a time that I came, that I clawed out of, and to be constantly reminded of it, and to have a year of my life that was 10 years of letting that go, and that to, you know, for that to have us, to be out there as well, was really important to me. You know, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but it was important to me. You know, the other, that I was viewed out there as not just being, you know, this guy that can only photograph people with short hair. Totally. I just knew I was in a revolution. I just fucking knew it. Just knew it. Every, from the day I went to the, the first one, I was just like, this is a revolution. And it fucking was. The most unsung one this country's ever had. Because your gender couldn't tear them to pieces. With skinheads, anything working class, I can totally I just demonise you till the sun comes down. But with Ray, they couldn't do it. So it's been basically ignored. Even though the reverberations of it have just changed the fucking world and it's like it because there was no twiggies there was no sixes there was no little band of of people that represented that it, it was across the board from working class to the upper middle class a shared experience that no class could could own didn't last very long because you can't have 40k sound systems kicking off over the country up and down the country forever and, and, and so that changed, but for a year there, for a good year and a half, there was, there was anarchy. Like, good anarchy. Not the anarchy they try and force down your photos. It will happen with anarchy, like smash, you know, crust is smashing up fucking the city. But real anarchy. I glimpsed that. I can fucking go to my grave knowing I glimpsed what that would be like. But the one that pops out of my head is my mate. <clears throat> skinny Jim on the tube with a fag hanging out of his mouth. That's the one that popped into my head. It's such a mental image. And the one people seem to love is a kid with the owl. You know, they love that image. 
But um, with me, but at the moment, this moment in time, sat here, the one of Skinny Jim pops into my head. Just the thing, I took that when I was 15, and it's just such a phenomenal image.